I'm Patty Mullen, and I'm going to be presenting about indexing Wikipedia as a measure of single machine performance. So February this year, a friend of mine wanted to uh, use Wikipedia as a data store, um, as a corpus of text for another project. And he said, well, maybe it'd be nice if we could search, but let's scrape it first. And I looked through, and there's the great part of the data import handler FAQ where it says, you can just slurp this XML file and it will work. So I said, let's do this. And what I ended up with was a really great demonstration project of how, uh, how you can set up a solar project. And I think it's useful for a lot of things. One of them is seeing what you can do on a single machine and where the performance limits end up. So this, matter, this project matters because it's quick to get running, which when you're starting with solar is really nice. If you can just see, here's how everything fits together. Uh, and the, the example documentation is good, but having a, a real data source that people can relate to is important too. So who here has used Wikipedia? Yeah. Is, wi Wikipedia is very relatable. I've been told not to say the Wikipedia because it sounds like a Bushism. I'm working on it. Um, it's a fairly general data set, it's, so it's not s super specific uh, about uh, Numbers, this regular documents, uh, so that's good. This project is hackable. I've set it up so you can very quickly change how solar is configured, which version of solar you're pointing at, which other Java versions you're pointing at, and it still compiles, and that's just built in there, which has all been a bit of stumbling block for me when I approach a new project. Well, how do I change this? If it's in a package management system, it's a lot less obvious than if it's in a source control system. And I've documented it a lot. So here's how you get it running. And this is how it was until two days ago, where you set up this and this and this, and you put, put some environment variables in your profile. And then I uh, just made a script. You can just pipe it to shell and installs everything for you. That installs solar, that installs, uh, sets up your data directories. It starts downloading the data dump from uh, Wikipedia, and then it starts breaking it out into files of uh, 1K, 100, 10K, 100K, and full. So you can test through those, and it starts indexing, starts with a solar server and uh, indexes the 1K version. It takes a couple hours to run, but you shouldn't have to touch it at all, and then you can start playing with it. So everyone knows Wikipedia. You don't have to come up with contrived queries. So the canonical database uh, example is, oh, let's f figure out what Fred in accounting makes, or how many people in accounting make more than Fred. Well, that's great, but I'm not interested in that. I am interested in Wikipedia, though. So it works really, really well for that. And it's clear how it relates to your own data. Uh, you should. That's important because if you're, if you're looking at an accounting data set for SQL, that might not drive well with what you're doing. Uh, hackable. So it's built on top of Git submodules. If you wanted to run solar against uh, version 3 instead of master, you go into that directory, check that out, and recompile everything, and it starts running again. It's not... Uh, it's, you're not dealing with Maven or Ant. That's all built into it. And here's the documentation I've written for it. There's a lot. Uh, goes through the basic queries. So this is this uh, project should short circuit a lot of planning stage projects where oh I'd like to use Solar. I'd like to come up with a search, with a search system for this project. What, how fast is solar? Is solar fast enough for this? And you, you say to your boss, well, it should be fast enough, I think. And the hard part of that is going to be getting, a, a solar projects from what I found, is getting your data into solar. Tuning solar once it's there isn't nearly as big a deal as getting your data in, at least for the first 90%. And then the next 90% is tuning solar. But so if you can just take a look at Wikipedia, uh, th this data set and say, well, it answers these queries in this speed. We know it's this similar to our data. You can avoid all those conversations and save yourself a lot of time. Um, and it works great for 
document stores. So if, if you're searching a company wiki, this is going to work pretty well. If you're trying to do uh, real-time stuff, this is not the uh, best data set or project to compare it against. And uh, Twitter style apps, we have a lot of small messages. This isn't going to relate as well as uh, uh, a document source. So the, the average plain text size on Wikipedia, a Wikipedia, Wikipedia is an article and solar to document. So the average Wikipedia article size is uh, about 13 kilobytes. Um, the whole dump has 12 million articles, which is not a huge number. I mean, a lot, a lot of you get, deal with much larger systems. Um, it's enough to get a start. Uh, thir the dump is 33 gigabytes on disk when it's expanded, and it uh, compresses down to a 12 gigabyte index size. If you want to index Wikipedia, this is a really great place to start. It will tell you all you want to know, but you probably don't. So the closer your corpus is to Wikipedia, the better. If you want to figure out how, you, how your system will perform on EC2 and have a good baseline for that, this will work quite well for that uh, because I've indexed it on EC2. If you want to see how it runs on your custom hardware, uh, download it and install it and then run the benchmark scripts. Uh, it will get you definitely within an order of magnitude, hopefully closer. So the first I'm going to go through how the indexing setup worked. And I use the data import handler, which is in the contrib section of Solar. And that says you can pull data into Solar through SQL, through XML. And so in the FAQ for that, there's this wonderful section where it says, here's how you use pull from Wikipedia, which you can, but it gives you a media wiki markup language. So it's, it's, uh, it's not plain text, which is not useful for a lot of things. It's good for seeing Hey, I've shoved 12 million documents in there. Does, does that get what I want done? But if you actually want to have some quality of results, it's really not that great. So um, there's a library called uh, Java Wikipedia Parsing Library. And I use that along with a custom transformer in the data import handler to uh, parse those XML documents. Well, the XML documents are parsed, but parse the fields into plain text, and then you can split it out by section. Uh, of, of a Wikipedia article. And multiple size, set up uh, multiple size indexes, 1K, 10K, 100K, and full. Uh, so here is the schema.xml. It's fairly standard. Um, article plain text count and Wikimedia markup count, those will come into play later for some of the stuff I did. That's just a count of the number of characters in those fields. And that is useful for debugging. Oh, ah. so the compressed file is eight gigabytes. The uncompressed dump file is 33 gigabytes. And I'd rather not have my disk read 33 gigabytes. So you could part, um, decompress bzip2 in Java, or you could use the existing Unix tool. I chose the existing Unix tool to write uh, that file to a named pipe that Java read from. That required modifying the data import handler because there's a check there where it says, is real file. Uh, and it doesn't matter, it, it's a stream of text. So I, I made that change and yeah, you read eight gigabytes instead of 33, it's faster. It's also paralyzed because uh, beyond zip2 is running in a separate process, which is helpful. Um, so, Error, that's another useful field. Uh, article plain text, section parse, and Wikimedia markup. Um, most of the time I would store these as false. Uh, as it became more developed earlier on, I would store the full input side and output side so you could do comparisons more quickly. Uh, here is data config. Who here has used data import handler? Okay. So, we'll ask people. So this is how it picks off fields from Wikipedia. Here's all the skip stuff. So remember I said there were 12 million documents in, in the full, full English dump and then 5 million that you actually stick in the index? About 7 million of them are redirects, categories, Wikipedia, colon, which is something about, here's how we talk about this thing on Wikipedia. 
uh, portal or disambiguation. So those had, uh, for the use case I had, they added very little value to uh, the index, so we kept those out. Uh, and they also end up being really small. So here is indexing performance on a couple different machines. Uh, for number of articles, size, so these are uh, EC2 machines and it's indexing against an EBS volume. Um, this is approximate that somewhere around 28 hours. But uh, the MacBook Pro is this one with an external drive that, ah, it's the seconds, minutes, minutes, hours. That would have been helpful. Seconds, minutes, minutes, hours. <laughs> Seconds, minutes, minutes, hours. Uh, so 14 hours with an M1 medium. Uh, it's primarily I.O. limited. The J, uh, JWPL library is, is quite slow. So in other tests when I have left out, uh, just index, thrown, thrown the raw Wikimedia straight into uh, Solar, it runs probably, around 50% faster. Uh, so that depends on, I guess, your, your personal, your data set and how your indexing setup works. So this was how it was set up. At one point I had a uh, SSD, but this is the Java config. Uh, this is all you can go through any permutation you want. Uh, it's fairly easy to set that up in, in the uh, repo and change stuff for that. So here's the query performance and the queries I did. So one, one term phrase, um, two term phrase, one, two phrases each with one term, uh, one term board and it. So when I was going through, I dealt with the Anarchy article a lot because that's the first article that comes up in the XML dump. And these are all queries that occur in the first thousand articles. Uh, so they will, they occur there, they'll occur through the whole data set. Uh, and you can add your own query if you want. Uh, and, yikes, that didn't come out right. Uh, so, here are performances on an M1 medium instance on EC2. Uh, it's fairly fat, there, and there's a large jump between 12 million and 100K. 100K was the testing size I was using. Uh, a 1 million size would have been very useful also. Uh, the OR queries were by far the slowest, but this tells you uh, how it performs. And the benchmark for this was uh, fairly robust, it's getting more, more robust. And here it is on a M1 small. This is just unacceptable. Depending on your application, probably all of it's unacceptable, but uh, there it is. I did not get 100K here, so just bear in mind when you compare them. Uh, so two. Okay, so to the query benchmark work like this. I would run these five queries. These five queries, shut down solar, start it up, and run it 10 times and average the numbers. Uh, having that as a script so it would take maybe a minute to run the full test suite was quite helpful. Uh, and that's something I'll be getting to. Script, script, script. Uh, every time. Like there's never a last time I've dealt with something with solar. It's like, oh, well, let me tweak this and let me rerun all this stuff. The earlier you get to that in your project, the, it will save a lot of headaches. As you work through a wiki, as you work through a solar project, script stuff. It makes a difference, uh, especially when you have longer run times where it could go here or there and I was dealing with three machines. Well, I was trying this out on this machine, that out on that machine, and the better script that it is, your life will be easier. Um, use different index sizes to iterate through stuff quickly as you try different ideas, and use Solar to help you debug. So put all scripts into version control, tag every benchmark with Git revision, and I didn't get to, get to doing a lot of stuff with Git revisions that I wanted to, but even having in your 
your indexes, your, the git revision that was used to index it, it's going to be helpful. Um, this is more useful for dealing with uh, how you index stuff. So I, I would come up with, you're know, looking at how the performance of something map, um, how pulling out certain types of results work, so what type of stemmer you would use. Uh, but especially for data cleaning, which I had to do a lot of on this project. Uh, do manual steps, less chance. And then here are scripts that are included in the project. Uh, one step initial install, start solar, update everything, run different re-indexings, run tests, run benchmarks. It's fairly standard stuff, but it gets more difficult when you're dealing with separate processes and figuring out, well, let me figure out how to start up solar and kill it, and then it was worth the effort. Uh, so I've been through this. Uh, so some of the interesting stuff I did on this project, um, I, let's see. the stats component, I, I had um, the Wikimedia markup count and plain text, article plain text markup count where uh, I had a ratio of those and I could look at the average. And then I could look at documents that had, were, had a very low ratio or a zero or really high. And that was a very good way of figuring out which articles had screwed up one parsing. And ideally, you would have a great unit test suite and, well, what are all the, all the um, and weird cases. But when you deal with 12 million articles or even more, and especially a, a, a heterogeneous set, you're going to have odd errors. Some errors I didn't see until I got a, a million documents in or 300,000 documents in. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to start this. Oh, it blew up. How frequently does it blow up there? So you don't want to just fail as soon as you blow up. I started throwing stack traces and errors into the solar index so I could see which errors were coming up more frequently. And that was quite useful. Um, and the, what else was I doing with stats component? Uh, yeah, stats component is, is just the way it gives you averages was very, very helpful. Uh, so on GitHub, and that's the, the bulk of it. How much I pay Amazon to, to, to run the stuff? Uh, I don't know, it's seven, eight dollars a month for a small instance. It's, it's fairly standard. Uh, using EBS, one of the things I'd like to do is uh, test a lot of this against ethereal storage versus EBS volumes, because EBS volumes are notably slow. Okay, uh, thanks for coming out.